wax, I would say, in an American term. Um, and, basically, and I think, you know, and certainly my experience is that people can see their way to basic income in, in it as a way to kind of try to balance that out a bit, you know, both in terms of allowing people who are working too hard to decrease their hours and also potentially giving more people access to some kind of money and, and ability to, um, to contribute in, in, any, in various ways to the economy, whether that's through unpaid work, whether that's through you know, forming a business, or whether that's um, through you know, getting a, a shorter hour job. <coughs> Sorry. Um, and that's really all I want to say right now. Okay. That's all right. If I, I'm very happy to throw it, to the, throw it open to the floor. Sure. Uh, yeah, I, I can share that. I mean, when that air comes back, please, everybody who wants to get a drink and hasn't, please buy yeah. one. And come and, come and find a seat around the table. Don't, 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 you know, don't. Sorry, guys, about that. Uh, at the back. Can Santos if you have problems with the uh, 4G? Um, yeah, please. Sorry. Yeah. That's why. Wi-Fi only works for about 10 minutes. Really? That's it. Mine works. Then I, mine's only 4G. Oh, uh, maybe okay. somebody should actually just use mine. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I have I have found actually that when I speak to say uh, tradesmen, mm. they think okay. At the moment, say maybe plumbers or electricians won't have yeah. no problems. Sorry. I thought we were actually just having a chat. Sorry. So, uh, listen. The idea of this evening is that we all get to exchange views and, and to uh, discuss discuss this issue in whatever detail we want. Um, so, um, I suppose I could use my privilege as chair to start. Uh, and I was reading. I mean, I've always been very inspired by this idea because because it's always struck me that um, if we were all to have a basic income. The shape of society would change entirely. These partial experiments seem to me to miss what strikes me as the main point of a basic income would assist us in transforming society in ways that we might not even now begin to, um, to, begin to conceptualize. But the idea of a society free of want <coughs> and free of stigma is so inspiring. And um, we are, the idea that we would be able to maintain our personal dignity without wage slavery is so inspiring. Mm. Um, uh, so I, I, I wanted to, as it were, lay that on the table. That it seems, you know, partially. But now I'm very happy for people to make their contributions, ask questions, respond to each other's points. Noel, do you want to start? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a great believer in, in, in citizen income. It's one of the things yeah. brought me into the Green Party. Uh, I wrote about it in the Green Book, White Board Green, in 2015. Mm. And I, I, I think one of the things, you know, exactly what you were saying, it would change society in ways we can't even conceive at the moment. One of the ways is. Uh, uh, small businesses could bloom because I know a lot of people want to go into business but are afraid because yes. you have to lose your uh, and it's a gamble. That's right, yeah, yeah. So this would allow it. Yeah, I'm glad Nelson said something because I think it's probably very important to say the Green Party does have policies on on this which may be different to I know the Green Party wanted to distinguish the way that we look at a basic income so much that we have a different name for it, I think. And citizens. A lot of citizens income. Yeah, so Natalie's actually so calling it citizens basic income. And uh, <laughs> of the, uh, Whatever. <laughs> sorry, no, sorry, no, sorry. So I think a lot yeah. of the negative things people think about it are things that we're addressing actually. Mm -hmm. And some of these things like businesses blooming, I've done that on work for tax credit, which means I could start a small publishing company for six years with no income at all. Mm -hmm. So it is something you can already do. And the citizens or basic income actually sort of replaces that with a different mm -hmm. system. The mistake that was made by NASA was they multiplied up everyone getting this, it's additional income. It's mm -hmm. not, it replaces what many people already get without the bureaucracy. So right. that's yeah. how it can be cheaper. And also without the fear, I mean, with tax credits, I mean, you lose everything. <laughs> You know, if you go over sure, a certain yes. level, then you kind well, of lose most of it. You know, I'm, going to, I'm, I'm going to lose it now because right. I won't manage yeah. it. It's unsustainable. But it's that, you know, because as a benefits advisor, yeah. what I'm often doing is helping people, like, try not to pay back. 
But the HMRC wants them to, you know, because yes. if you just go over slightly, I mean, you lose, you know, the, the withdrawal rate is something like 85% of the tax credits, yes. you know, so, uh, you know, you go over the limit and it's, it's it can be a real disaster for some people. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you know, it's sleeping it's on like your face. Yeah. It's less than, it's yeah, less yeah. than um, job seekers are yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And I do a lot more work. I think I make exactly. a huge contribution to, yeah. um, uh, you know, to care for someone outside of the NHS. Absolutely. So I, I just, I think, um, I personally would really welcome this kind of uh, debate and this kind of change mm -hmm. uh, for that reason. So are you getting sixty-two pounds a week then, or less? So <coughs> less. less. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like six so, months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not very much, and over a month, it yeah. doesn't afford me to even travel every yeah. day in London. <coughs> so I, I can't. I just can't do it. Mm -hmm. And I, if if I was not housed and fed, I would not be afford. You know, I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. Yeah. Period. So it. So it. There's a huge argument, uh, a real argument for mm -hmm. people who are in the hidden economy, maybe mm. part-time workers, mm. uh, women who are caring for ch young children, uh, women who are, uh, and, and people generally, men and women, who are caring for relatives, mm. it would benefit them enormously. And also, I think it kind of frees you up to, you know, like, um, perhaps, the, I mean, I would quite like to do a, a, a course in caring and so on, but it doesn't afford me to do that and yeah. the, the wage I want, basically. Mm -hmm. So it would free you up to actually um, make yourself more marketable in that sense. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah I mean, there's a lot of good arguments for it. Right? It's worth pointing out that pensioners in this country all get a basic income, mm -hmm. and there's no stigma attached mm -hmm. to doing that. And I love the idea of that spreading down throughout the entire adult population. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Any other comment or question? <laughs> okay, Chuck, tell us, yes. Um, I'm entirely in favor of it, but I feel one of the major arguments that we might hear against mm. is that people won't bother to work. Mm. Um, <laughs> so, Bob, will anyone evidence? ever work again? <laughs> Do you have any evidence we can present to the well, that's the thing with the with the pilot studies. I mean, there's certainly the one in India and the one in Namibia. People actually were much more economically active. So, I mean, this idea that nobody's going to work. I mean, whenever anybody asks that, I always say, well, would you stop working? And 80% of the time, people say no. So, you know, it's always like something that somebody else is going to do. You know, I think it's quite funny, you know, like when people, you know, again, they bring up, well, nobody else, you know, nobody would work. Well, but I would. So why do you think other people, you know, so you, the way really is just to kind of turn that around and just ask them, well, would you stop working? And most of the time people say, well, not really. I might cut my hours down, but, mm -hmm. you know, because there are people, you know, it's not that it's not a, an anti-work thing. I mean, it's, it's, about, it's about having more control over what we do and more control over our lives. So, yeah. Okay, um, I think I'm going to go to you, and then... Yes. Yeah. 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 So it's sort of following on from that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm completely in favour as well. Um, but uh, when I, I'm particularly interested in talking about the, um, the, the more right conservative uh, disagreements with us, because mm -hmm. they're the people that need to be convinced, right? Because you're mm -hmm. pretty much in agreement. But, uh, so, yeah, so um, people not working is, is one issue that's Mm. Another one is, I've heard people say, is, oh well, um, it, it would mean, we might think it's a good thing, but you know, that people are thinking, oh well, if, uh, you know, if I don't have to work, then I'm just going to walk out of this, this uh, manual labour job that I came. Mm. Um, and to attract people to those jobs, people are going to have to raise wages, well, raise wages yeah. which is great mm -hmm. for the yeah. worker, but mm -hmm. um, maybe you know, in a globalized world, because that can make certain businesses you know, struggling to compete. Uh, mm -hmm. And also, in the issue with migration, so there's still, <coughs> um, you, know, to, to, you know, for example, does every EU citizen mm -hmm. get it if they come over here? What if you're non EU? What if you're, mm -hmm. you know, so there's, there's still those issues of inequality yeah. where some people will get it, but others won't. Mm -hmm. um, and will that create? Social division, um, 
Yeah, sorry, I threw a lot of you down. Yeah, that's a lot of, yeah, a lot of different things. Okay, let's try to pull that one apart. I wonder, a, large, a large proportion of, of the economy, particularly in Britain, is based on the scarcity of resources, mm. so and the scarcity of money. Mm. Uh, and there's going to be a huge opposition to any idea that says, well, we don't want to make money scarce anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, the whole of this government's uh, policy of austerity, yeah. in fact, many governments it's throughout Europe, it, yeah, 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 there must be scarcity, yeah. and only the very, very best will succeed. <coughs> and therefore, you can't have it's an anti equality society. Mm -hmm. And over maybe the last 40 years, the prevailing uh, philosophy that's been promoted both by both major parties mm -hmm. is that um, we, we, don't, we don't want to have equality. We don't. We, we can't afford it. It's something that is actually bad because we need incentives for the the best people to succeed. <laughs> so, in fact, uh, having a universal basic income is a totally revolutionary idea. It's 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 more than the workers owning the means of production. It's abolishing the scarcity of money, and that's okay. hugely hugely revolutionary. Or is that actually uh, enforcing capitalism? You know, trickle down economics. As somebody pointed out in the net. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, and it, I mean, it, I don't know. I'm going to try to say with it. Oh, 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 sorry. Right. Um, I mean, I think. I, I mean, that actually reminds me of another. I think really, really salient kind of green argument for basic income, which is that you know we treat we treat the economy like you know we treat the the earth like it's unbounded, like it's unlimited in terms of growth, in terms of you know, growth and production. But on the other hand, we treat this this resource that we've invented as though it's limited. Yeah. So, in the pursuit of treating the, you know money as limited, then we're treating the rest of the earth as though it's completely unlimited. And we know that that's a fallacy. So, can we not accept that the first you know that money is actually unlimited? So, you know, it's, it's a tool that we need to use, you know, in order to in order to um, make things better. Okay. So, uh, but I didn't really get to what you were talking about. So. Just remind me a little bit. Globalization, migration, <laughs> yeah. is confusing. Migration. Well, okay. There's a well. First of all, with the with the quite the the first thing, I think my first thought was, well, are we, you know, are we going to um, build a system around the worst in people, or are we going to build a system around the best in people? And I think the thing with basic income is that it emphasizes, you know, has potential to emphasize the best in people rather than. You know, building like what they've done with the current, you know, you, the universal credit system is they've, you know, said, well, we're going to take, you know, we're basically going to pursue people that they're, you know, people are going to have to be lashed into work. Um, but why shouldn't that be turned around? Why shouldn't it be that employers have to attract workers? I mean, that's one of the one of the key, uh, really fantastic speaker about basic income, Carl Viterquist, talks about, you know, well, actually, this jobs market is not. It's not really a market because it's not a market for workers because workers are forced to work. Employers are not forced to, you know, their employers are not forced to raise, the, you know, to make their their work attractive. Workers have to do it. So, you know, so that's just kind of turning that around. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of migration, um, one thing the citizens' income trust with citizens' income, it doesn't just mean people with UK passports. It also means people that have the right, to, you know, have the legal right to live here, which doesn't doesn't go for all all migrants. Um, but also the other thing to keep in mind is that the UK, we sort of think we're the center of the world, but actually, you know, it's probably much more likely that other countries will adopt basic income before this one does. So it's not, you know, and plus we're also in, in uh, U, uh, UBI Europe, we're also looking at, at the question of, of having a euro dividend. So if, you know, so if everybody got paid, you know, not, this wouldn't be enough to live on, this would be like 200 euros a month or something like that is the kind of level that we've been talking about. Um, it wouldn't be enough to live on in a place like, like UK or in Germany, but it would be enough, it would certainly make a massive difference to places like Bulgaria, Romania, Greece, a lot of the places that people are actually migrating from. So, yeah. So we'll we'll see how that plays out, basically. See, you're always talking about the European wide. Yeah. 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 For sure. And and most of us are also going for a global. You know, that this be adopted globally. All right. So we're in touch with groups in Africa. We're in touch with group. You know, the groups in in 
Korea. They're starting to form groups in, in China. There was one I just saw in Taiwan. Um, there was a big conference about it in Mexico just like two or three days ago. Um, Brazil has it in their constitution, although they've only started with the Bolsa Familia, which is which is slightly has more you know has some conditions on it. Um, yeah, so I mean it is it is truly a global movement for this right now, right? And you know Canada is very likely to start. You know there there's several towns in Canada that want to start pilots. Um, France is getting really close. You know the discussions are in upper levels of government now about doing this, and um, you know so various groups are having to take position on it. Um, yeah, so I mean it. You know we can't, we tend to think of the kind of migration problem. You know migration as a oh my God, we're being attacked, but I mean, you know, then you think of it, you know, it's kind of quite offensive that a lot of women have to travel thousands of miles in order to look after other people's kids in order to feed their own kids somewhere else, you know, and that's, you know, to me, I don't know, I, I sort of, personally, you know, I've also argued for basic income to be paid by land value tax on London, New York, and Tokyo, you know, and that would kind of cover the world for a while. And, you know, <laughs> at least until land values dropped in the wake of that. But you know, I mean, that, I, you know, those sorts of arguments, I think we can we can start making. You know, that there are places where where the world's wealth, and particularly some places like London, has been concentrated. So actually, we really owe the rest of the world quite a lot. So that's kind of my take on that. So okay. let's come back yeah. on the business yeah, thing quickly, really quickly. Because really mm -hmm. yeah, this is the one thing that really is, I get, you know, from, man, from, a, man, from a manufacturing perspective, mm. um, you know, they have to keep costs down as low as possible to compete with the rest of the world. Right. So, okay, let's, let's assume this policy is implemented, uh, wages go up to attract people to do all these, these uh, you know, long, you know, hours, factory jobs or whatever. Right. It's got, I, I don't know. I don't know enough about that. Right. But then you've got another country, you know, I don't want to name one. You know, sorry, that, that doesn't care about that. So they keep their costs really low. Mm. And, and then countries like ours can't compete with that. And so the is but what, what's actually been happening? Pressure. What's actually yeah. been happening is that wages in this country, you know, in the in the industrialized world, have been falling. Mm -hmm. All right, you know, and mm -hmm. and then what's also been happening in places like China is that people are rebelling against the work. So, you know, wages have had to go up yeah, in China. Exactly. Okay. So then, the, I mean, yes, then they've moved to Bangladesh or they moved to Vietnam. But you know, I think similarly, you know, where capital has not had, you know, not, you know, they they actually prefer not to automate. If they can, if they can get away with it. Yeah. And that's but that's sort of more yeah. economic argument. Yeah. I, I mean, I trained India to because I worked in IT and mm -hmm. I trained people in India to take my job, and mm -hmm. I was made redundant. Right. <laughs> right. Now w wages in India, I know for IT workers have risen and have risen. It's a very short-term game. So now everyone is coming back here. Mm. They're all all those jobs that yeah. went over there and are coming back because those workers are demanding the same equivalent wages. Mm. So this is a very short-term economic game. Yeah. Okay. I was I was actually uh, uh, thinking about what you were saying because uh, I was reading a few months ago where um, the man, uh, Samsung and uh, Foxconn and all that stuff, the manufacturers of mobile phones, are saying they want to have a fully automated factory. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking that once that happens, and then others actually uh, say, okay, robots. Mm. I mean, people still yeah, yeah. sort of scoff at it, but then once a robot can actually be programmed to build a chair out of wood, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm thinking that would, be, would people rebel or just, would just say, okay, accept it and... Well, we're going to have to do something, that's the thing. I mean, you know, we have to tax the robots, right? You know, for, the, for, the, you know, for basic income. Sorry, you had a question that you, you had before. Oh, you sorry. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, sorry. Um, I, uh, I uh, um, came a bit late, so I don't know if you, you might have answered this already, but uh, I'm curious as to uh, whether it shouldn't just be about income, whether it like, shouldn't just be about the object of money, but whether, y you know, basic income should come with uh, kind of, I don't know, skills with money management and that kind of thing. You know, I, I just kept on thinking of, okay, yeah. um, you know, you teach a... Or give a man a fish, he eats for a day or whatever, mm -hmm. but teach a man a fish, he eats 
for mm. ever and ever. Um, so that kind of analogy. Then you automate fishing, fishing and then what happens? <laughs> 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 yeah, but the basic. So, yeah, level, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, How? What? What is? What is? I mean, I, I, I'm just uh, concerned that the focus is too narrow. Mm -hmm. Well, <coughs> yeah. I mean, one of <coughs> sorry, one of our one of our original slogans was everyone everyone deserves a means to live. And I certainly, personally, I sort of think of it as, you know, this is like progress to other other sorts of things that we need. Um, I think, yeah. I mean, there, I've I've had it thrown at me a lot that oh well, we don't want a money society, so you know, we want this other kind of society where nobody uses money, et cetera, et cetera. I can't say that I'm like against that, but I because I don't understand it so well. But but the but I think in, in terms of getting there, I think you actually have to give everybody. You know, what better way to take the value out of money than to give everybody the same amount of money? You know, as a as a start. You know what I mean? And and but, but it also has to be about the means to live. So that means housing. That means you know, if you have special needs, then you you but have services. Like, and like classes education. on taxing. For example, how to how to budget and things like that. I think yeah. Like well, that that's the thing. When I'm talking to union members, all right, you know, I mean, you know, say like the PCS, which runs the Dole offices, all right, you know, I mean, there's going to be a lot of there's going to be a lot of stuff we need to do, you know, to for the wreckage of, that's going on right now. There's going to be a lot of stuff that's needed, you know, a lot of different kinds of skills and that sort of thing, which is needed. And I, you know, yeah. so I don't actually see it as a kind of Necessarily anti-bureaucratic in the sense of getting rid of civil, ser you know, people that are serving the public. It's more about, you know, changing their relationships so that it's not, you know, it's not this kind of weird, kind of pater paternalistic and capricious nonsense that's going on right now. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so, I mean, I think, I think that's, that's probably one of the most important benefits is the, the health of the nation by taking the conditionality. Of the uh, the system at the moment of work capability assessments. Oh, the WCA is just evil. <laughs> it's such so evil. You know, when you see not just how it's run and the but whole philosophy behind they it. They don't actually save any money. No, and I mean, I, I'm really surprised that people have accepted it. All right, in the sense that we've already paid for the NHS to diagnose and treat people. So why do we need, you know, some kind of non-qualified, usually a person that isn't qualified in the that person's particular illness. And, yeah, don't get me started on yeah. that. Okay. To, to, quick, to quibble over um, a benefit of free SI or ESI of £73 a week when it results in a GP's appointment for somebody mm. with depression, more medicalisation. Oh, hugely. Um, no, I mean, I absolutely. And medication yeah. that are people completely unnecessary. Absolutely. Um, the, the savings to the nation. And again, um, ex, no, ex, ex offenders. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, what, what this pension. government's done, all right, is they've basically been taking money out of people's pockets and giving it to their cronies who are running these sorts of things, right? So, I mean, that's, yeah, anyway, I, yeah. <laughs> there other, other people wanted yeah, to say yeah, the brother up here and, yeah. You, you, yeah. 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 you had your yeah. 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 part mm. um, in, in what you said, you know, you mm. think I don't want to do this job, I won't do it. Mm. Um, I mean, the fact is there are a lot of jobs that people wouldn't want to do that we need to get done and people might think... Mm. But would they? I see this, sorry, yes. yes. This is no, but yeah. I, I okay. think the answer to that is that this, that is, this actually is a basic I think it was a bit like working tax credit at the moment. Mm. People would actually be paid for to do these things, but like what David's question was. Before well. you get that, there, wasn't, I don't think Nate was yeah. answered on yeah, that. Yeah, I would like to address yeah. that. So okay, but that, yeah. Yeah. you wanted to yeah. say something, so yeah. please yeah. go ahead. I don't know. I don't know if it's a stupid question or not, but no. uh, aren't we? Aren't we if, if you if you introduce a basic income, yeah, first of all, everybody would have the same amount. But aren't you just raising the starting point for everybody's earnings from zero to so the basic income? So those things that will happen. So in short term, yeah, they will benefit everyone. But in a capitalist society, what's to stop all that extra money just being hoovered up by the cost of living? So you know, price of rent going up, yeah, price of property going up in London because that's. Essentially, any spare money that you get, that's what will be hoovered up. The inflationary effect. Yeah. So what's to stop that? There are actually there are a lot of arguments about this, obviously. Um, 
I'm not an economist, so I can't sort of say one way or the other, but inflation, what they, they didn't in, certainly in like the Indian, in the Indian pilot study, they didn't find inflation because um, people basically, because economic activity went up to fill the gap. Okay, so because if you have economic activity and you have more, more, more being produced, that fills the gap. Okay, so because often like inflation happens, you know, it, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to get into those sorts of things. I really don't India, understand. India, you have to sell sort of like inequality between well, that's capital the thing. and earnings. Yeah. You know, like in, in, I mean, we've got, you know, if you look at the price of it, well, that's the thing. Wouldn't, I mean, then it would enable people to actually not, not they wouldn't have to be in London in order to be economically active, which is actually what's going on right now, is that people have to come here to get work, because there's such, there's, you know, economies have been devastated outside London. You know, if you go out, I mean, almost anywhere, practically, outside London, and I'm not saying that everybody, you know, everybody's as poor as everybody else, but I mean, it, you know, there's sort of the, your centers, you know, you've got Oxford, and you have Cambridge, and you have, you know, Bath, or that's kind of, right. you know, can, Bristol. Can, can, can. Yeah, please, yeah. yeah. Um, this, you're, you're, you think as if people on minimum wages can actually no, afford I, I, the I things. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no, 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 but if, if, hypothetically, mm -hmm. they cannot afford, actually, even on that wage, to create inflation, because inflation has been created artificially by propping up artificial markets. Yeah. Housing being, a market, being the main one mm -hmm. in London. Yeah, so if, for example, now a scenario, hypothetical scenario, there was a crash in China and in Russia simultaneously, mm -hmm. and that foreign investment in London just stopped, what do you think would happen right here in the city of London? I think it, it could have drastic implications for the property market. Yeah, absolutely. Market. We would but it's all be in very deep shit here. So well, these are artificial. Oh, are these are very artificial markets, yes. and it would not take much for them to collapse. They're as fragile as the economy of those banks that created everything out of nothing. So you know, so we're looking at that kind of scenario. Those are artificial inflation. Of course, people's mm -hmm. willingness to engage in that because it's a necessity. necessity. Yeah, yeah, Somewhere yeah, to live yeah. is a necessity, so people will pay it even though they can't afford mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Um, and that's as much an issue, you know, people's unwillingness to. But uh, again, I, I still, think, I, I still mm -hmm. wonder that, you know, just because you're uh, equ equalising, I agree with your point completely. You know, yeah, it's yeah. unaffordable whether you're a minimum wage, even if you're. And, you know, earning relatively well in London is yeah. unaffordable. So I take a point in time. But I wonder, and also sort of spreading it around the country as well, you know, that's another yeah. thing that I, you know, why, why do we want, you know, like if, it, if it's an issue here in the South East, moving, uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, that, that's it's a question rather than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, for sure. But, but, yeah. You know, these are artificial inflation, oh, and exactly. you know, and you have to take you have to take that for what it is, basically, because but so if you put money that nobody has to pay back into the economy, that creates a wealth, and it creates a wealth on a very basic level, and that is not inflationary. That's actually creating. Oh well. Yeah, and there's some, some there are some economists who are actually right. arguing that we need some inflation. In fact, I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean Francis Coppola, who really supports this idea, was an ex-banker. I mean, she, you know, she's basically saying, well, we're in it, even though we don't feel it because food, fuel, and, and housing have gone up so much. But other sorts of things like you know, like these electronic things that we use and stuff like that. I mean, those those prices have really gone down. My telecoms bill. I was. It was really funny. I was looking at my at my telephone bill from the 80s, and it was ridiculous because I was having to call the states and stuff. I mean, now I can do that for free. I mean, you know. So I think there's yeah. Out of that. Sorry. Yeah. I, I was going to say in the U.S. right now, there's a, there's a big debate starting in the Republican Party. The old farmers and people in the Midwest are saying 
we want solar power, we want wind power. Mm. And we, we believe in all that stuff. But the, the, the Republican powers that be, the sense of, you know, that's all, we don't want all that nasty stuff. Global warming is not happening. No, climate change is not here. Um, given given that, that, that kind of resistance, you know, what are you doing, or what are you others doing about convincing the Tories and, and other powers that be of, of the benefit, of the economic benefits? Or, or the particularly well, it's really interesting. Society I mean, and yeah, you guys, I can get basic guys, income. <laughs> yeah, you guys know Clive Lord, right? Yeah. Who's been the big advocate right. for basic income, you know, in, in the, the Green group, Party. Within sure. the Green Party. I mean, his big thing is that the report that resulted in universal credit, the first half of it, is an argument for basic income. Yes. You know, there are a lot of reports. No, no, but I mean that. But that that was actually quite a key one, all right. You know, in, in sort of the institution of a, of a of a massive welfare reform, and the first part of it is basically an argument for basic income, and the second part of it is how we have to whip everybody into line. So I mean, you know, it's sort of which which one do you take? Yeah, there? We, we, we are the more or less ready to be converted. Yeah. So what what are being made to get to? Convert? Well, I mean, I think the thing with with people that that aren't used to the idea, this gives everybody a floor. This makes this always make this makes each makes sure that work always pays. They're always kind of obsessed about work and people working and stuff. Well, this makes sure that this this actually makes sure that all work pays in a way that the current benefit system is not. And I think that's one reason why you know some conservatives are getting into this idea and, and thinking, well, you know, we've just spent billions on on a new welfare reform which isn't working and why not you know we need to do something else basically. i want to develop on andrew's question yeah from a question that's come through on the internet that was uh, whispered to me earlier mm. and that is um i would i would go further than andrew i would say that your audience here is so what okay. we want to know is how to bring it about and the question yeah. on the internet yeah. was how do we bring it about mm. yeah well, I think exactly, yeah. I mean, you know, we've got the, as I said, we've got some plans on the table for, for the UK, which I think, I hope that we will be able to really push for the next the next general election, whether it's a Green Party plan or Labour comes up with something or well, is whatever. Corbyn. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Green Party does have a plan. They definitely have a plan. I don't know why you guys haven't seen it yet. <laughs> we did. I have. I was in the election. We did have a policy. Yeah, no, there was a policy. It, 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 and it step was, back, it was, step back yeah. they, get, they get scared of the, uh, the right-wing media. But then, but then they, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, people weren't arguing, you know, they weren't using all the arguments I for it that could have been used. knows basic income. Well, she tried. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I have to give her, give her a fair <laughs> play for that. I got yeah. very yeah. clear instructions on including yeah. how to persuade them. It's really, we've got this already. It's just a number yeah. of different benefits. And basic assistance income replaces them, yeah. and it's much cheaper to work on um, bureaucratically. So, um, and I mean, I was at a, I was at a, a thing last week where um, where Ed Miliband was speaking with, with Nick Cernicek, who one of the authors of Inventing the Future and talking about the future of work, and it was really a conversation about basic income. Mm -hmm. And he's very, although he said it, you know, Ed Miliband said at the beginning, well, I'm waiting to be convinced, he was actually making more arguments for it than Nick Cernicek. So, I mean, he's sort of like that, and he also said that he's, he's had Tories come up to him, Tory MPs come up to him and say, well, what was all this stuff about basic income anyway? You know, so, it's much more in the air than it was, say, even okay. two years ago. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, really. I mean, they did mention that Richard Nixon so, wanted to actually introduce basic income in here, so. Well, yeah, ne yeah, a kind of negative income tax. You know, because again, you know, this all the kind of stuff that's around the current system is, it's as loathsome to some Tories as it is to anybody else. So, I mean, you know, I think it's worth kind of keeping that in mind. But I do think, I mean, it will come in stages. I don't think that we're going to make the great leap into, you know, sort of basic income, which is enough, you know, which is definitely enough to live on for everybody, for, you know, which is a flat rate or whatever. I don't think that's, personally, I just don't see that happening in the next five years. But I, but I think it would be a real help to kind of, you know, to back the, the kinds of plans that are coming out at the moment, even though they're only partial. It means a hybrid system because it does keep, you know, it does keep housing benefit and disability benefits in place. Um, but, <coughs> but it would be a kind of step forward to just release some of the, you know, some money that's not involved with bureaucracy and not involved with working and not involved with being in a relationship. So those, those things, these things. Okay. Mm. Okay, I, have, so, I have a bit of a, um, 
a very controversial one I want to introduce at this point. And that is, let us assume that every adult is given a, a basic income, right? Mm -hmm. No, this is the point I'm coming to. This is about population, right? This is why it's so controversial. Okay. Would, would this be a means of disincentivizing having too many children? No. You know why? Tell me. Because every single study on the subject shows that women have more children when they feel less secure economically. So in fact, all right, this, you know, and you look at the, you look at what happened with child benefit, and the birth weight went down in this country. Whoa. Now that they've made, now that they've made child benefit means tested, now that the, now that people are much more economically insecure, the birth rate is starting to rise again. You're drawing, so, you're drawing to the um, um, uh, causal conclusions from what are simple correlations. You could no, well, no, could, they've done studies. Okay. Right? That's uh, I mean, Bob Jacobson, Basic Income UK. <laughs> <laughs> They asked so me where you are, sorry. Oh, okay. No, I mean, you, you, no, seriously, I mean, there's been a lot of, there's been a lot of study about, you know, popul how, to, how to reduce population, what, you know, what sorts of things happen. They realize that just giving, giving women contraception or giving men and women contraception is not enough. All right. Um, making the arguments is not enough. Um, that really the best contraception is women having aspirations and feeling economically secure enough to follow them. Okay. All right, and that's that. I'm sorry. I just, I really, you know, because I have had this question before, and you know, if you look at what's happened with, you know, and obviously, like one of the things with child benefit was supposedly, you know, to support a, to support a higher birth rate, but actually it goes down. All right, because women feel they feel more secure, and they're able to follow some of their aspirations, and therefore we have less kids, and that's that. I mean, you know, there's no, you know, like pain. You know, and the idea, all right, just the idea that women have kids in order to get a particular benefit or to get housing or whatever is, I'm sorry, it's it's been blown out by several kinds of studies. So, okay. unfortunately, I can't put my finger on them straight away, but if you look them up on the net, you can find them very easily. Mm. So. Unfortunately, well, I'm from the Philippines, and like, uh, well, Catholic Church, no contraception mm. and everything else mm. allowed because it's from Satan. Uh, but uh, you do find that yeah, the, um, the poor people are the ones actually having uh, the most kids, and yeah. it's no matter what, because they see it as a way have as many kids as you can. Then yeah. exactly, then hopefully they're going to be your pension. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. absolutely. I mean, when people do have children, let's set that basic income where it says if you get money for the children, mm -hmm. so what's your view on that? Should people? Yeah, there should be. I mean, there should. I mean, there's a lot of different. You know, the the main plans. That, you know, pay pay children of half of the half of the adult based income. I can't remember what the Green Party plan is, but I think that's part of it. Um, certainly, I mean, the RSA plan doesn't pay pays people from the age. It's quite weird, actually. It's, it pays people from the age of 25, which actually should be I think should be a lot lower. Um, and uh, the CIT plans, there's various CIT plans, but they're generally paying sort of half of, oh, thank you. Um, they're paying sort of half of an adult-based income, which would be a huge, I mean, if child benefit had been raised in line with, with other, other sorts of wages or prices, I mean, it, it would be about 50 pounds a week now anyway. Or even more than that. So well, yeah, it was a terrible mistake to cut it. For, yeah. For, to, for, I think, personally, for people who have money, you know, like who have uh, above a certain wage of income. It, it is yeah. not about the parent. This is about the child. And every child is in, should be entitled to it. Mm. it. It doesn't matter what your parents are earning. It's for the child. It's a great way to divide and conquer. The whole mm -hmm. yeah. basis of cutting that was just, uh, it was ridiculous. It's yeah. just, there's no argument for it. On any level. No, and it also is, it was one of the least gained of all the benefits, you know, and least amount of fraud because it's like 
one benefit, you know, one child benefit it's per one child. child benefit. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. and also it was really, you know, it, it was it was very much, you know, like looking at, at at inequalities within families. Women don't always have access to the kind of money that we need to raise our kids, even if our husbands or partners are are earning, are earning a lot of money. I mean, it yeah, really exactly. does happen. I mean, so. that was that was the original. Of it. Yes, exactly. exactly. And the fact that yeah, exactly. then took it and means tested it, just kind of yeah. turned it completely so on its it's, head. It's the worst argument I've heard mm. for any benefit. Mm. Could I could I also ask a question sort of yeah. loosely linked to that, I guess. Um but and um sorry, it's not fully formed in my head yet. Um but sort of the idea that you could you could take of uh, something like child tax benefit and cap it like that, and, and could similar things could easily be done to um, a, a basic income, or in the same way that you know, sort of a, a living wage has been introduced by, um, mm -hmm. you know, and then other, and companies have have taken away other benefits, um, mm -hmm. and I'm just wondering, sort of, could it be sort of I guess no, of abused could. in that way, and, and, and how could we stop that? Absolutely, happening? no, and that's you know that's why we have to build our power. I mean, it, you know, whether that's as a movement generally, or as a party, or you know, as people that support basic income. I mean, we need to build, be building our power within our communities and, and other sorts of relationships that we have, you know, vis the government, so that we get the right thing. You know, and keep making the arguments. Even you know, we get like a partial basic income, but then we have to keep making the arguments that we actually need more. You know, that that other things in society can be made more, much more universal. You know, I mean, look at the NHS. We had, we have a universal health system. You know, which is collapsing, right? But um, but you know, it's been one of the best things about this country, and one of the things that people have been most proud of. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and and it kind of blows out. You know, but then why don't we look after people before they get sick? You know, I think in a way, like basic income could be almost the savior of the NHS. You know, people are talk about sort of, well, you know, it's like, is it basic income or is it services? But actually, if you have a basic income, then actually, you know, people are less stressed, getting into less ac accidents, not beating up on each other so much, and 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 better diet. Less alcoholism, I mean, that's another finding, you know, some people say, oh, well, everybody, you know, they'll just smoke weed and, you know, drink alcohol and, you know, what, <laughs> shoot themselves up, you know. But in fact, I mean, you know, when you look at those at those sorts of addictions, a lot of it is a reaction to stress about, about having to survive. So yeah. Yeah. you remove that stress and actually, you know, smoking goes down, you know, alcohol consumption goes down and other, mm -hmm. other sorts of things. And also, like, there was a, a report about it an Indian reservation where they did a kind of basic income off, I mean, not something that we want necessarily, but off the gambling, you know, because in the, in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of Native Americans have, have you know, have casinos and stuff, and they started paying that out to the to the whole of the, the whole of the reservation, and again, you know, alcoholism and drug addiction went down, mm -hmm. you know, because again, you know, you've got to look at those sorts of you know, the causes of those sorts of things. And it really is about stress and about, you know, not feeling like you're a functioning person. Yeah, I think it's your question it was very, very good. In, yeah. in 2000, when we had um, three representatives on the GLA, I became friendly with Victor Anderson, our third representative, and I was talking about this idea with him. And he was saying, the reason that I'm not advocating it is because it seems to me it will be the first thing that governments will cut whenever they need to um, whenever they need to save money, and uh, and that brings me on to a, um, something that I touched on with um, Bob before this meeting, and that is alternative and independent and local currencies. Mm -hmm. And one of one of the things we talked about because um, there there is also embedded in the Green Party vision the idea that there would be more than one national currency with which we could trade goods and services, that there would be local currencies or that there would be alternative currencies. And one idea that Bob mentioned to me, I don't know if you can say more about it now, mm -hmm. is the idea that uh, basic income would be paid in could, one of those alternative could. currencies. Yeah, yeah. Germany is uh, at least three, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's. I mean, I think it's a good idea. Uh, we we certainly have every few months somebody pops up with a cryptocurrency idea how you can do cryptocurrencies. Obviously, the problem with currencies is actually getting people to to accept them, and that's the big problem that most local currencies have is that you have to work very very hard 
to get you know a, a good range of people and a good range of businesses to actually accept them. But I think it's you know I think certainly part of a basic you know certainly part of a basic income could be paid in local currencies you know in order to keep that money within within communities. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, I was going to suggest that it might be better to look at different ways of uh, paying people and and actually bartering. So you've got a reciprocity across mm. a local community mm. so that, for example, this cafe, if you, um, you know, would accept some tokens if you, if you came in mm. and contributed locally to the economy, then you could spend your tokens in this mm. cafe and so on. And only then you have to do is get local businesses to accept that as a, as a payment. Mm. And, and because mm. it's local people using it, and the, you know, it's, there's less danger of being diddled or feeling that you've been shortchanged somewhere. Mm. <laughs> because mm. everyone lives in the same kind of place and in close mm. proximity. And you can't, you can't take it out. You and you can't, can't take it out. Sorry, somebody's asking, um, is there actually a way to uh, make uh, sort of like a minimum here and uh, how much would you need to raise and can we crowdfund it? <laughs> <laughs> can we watch it? Crowdfund uh, 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 basic income, well, maybe experiment. Well, they've done, yeah, I mean, that's what Mein Grundeinkommen has done in, in Germany, that's for sure. Um, oh, yeah, I heard about that. So. Yeah, yeah, they've uh, they started out with, what's his name, Michael... Oh, I can't remember his last name. Michael B. is what I call it. <laughs> anyway, the, he was a tech entrepreneur who decided that really he just needed a thousand euros a month to, to live on. And so then he decided then that, well, actually, everybody, you know, he basically sold his business and then he could just live on that. And so then he decided, well, this is really fun, so why don't I see if I can get this for other people? So what he did was he crowdfunded a basic income got people to write in about what they would do with their year. It's, it's crowdfunded, you know, so you get a basic income for a year. Um, they finished uh, last year, I think, was the, the end of the first year of, of basic income, but they've crowdfunded about 25 basic incomes by this point, okay. and they've got a staff of about six. And what they've done with that, it's not so much, they don't rely on crowdfunding so much anymore, they actually rely on a on like a, you know, like these shopping cards, like local shopping cards, except that like a, a very small percentage of what you buy that goes to mindgood.com. So it's a bit like a kind of, VAT, you know, little VAT that then goes to mindgood.com and it's been very successful. Marie Penny so, uh, discusses this experiment in her column on basic income in the New States from last week. Mm -hmm. And she says that uh, 39 people out of a pool of volunteers were chosen at random to get this thousand euros a month. Uh, she says hardly anyone, this is the word she used, hardly anyone chose to stay on the sofa and eat crisps and watch TV for the year. <laughs> um, and that uh, uh, some people who'd given up on finding rewarding work managed to do it when they had that basic income coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, that one guy gave up his job in a call center to retrain as a nursery teacher and she says, Almost everyone, again, almost everyone slept better, mm -hmm. had better health, and focused more on family life. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, this already pointed out, actually, socialists want a job for everybody, but anarchists want more time with their family and community. So I think that's what we're sort of uh, trying to well, it's just, I mean, consider it's a kind here. of idea that, that, I mean, the women, uh, there's, a, there's a group on Facebook called Basic, women, Basic Income Women's Action Group, which was started by some women in the States, but also with some connections of Germany and Switzerland. Um, and they're really starting to talk about the care economy, moving from a market economy to a care economy. So care being care of oneself and each other and the environment. So, you know, if you can kind of like switch the focus, all right, so it's not about, you know, uh, you know, uh, winner take all competition and all this other stuff that we've been told is the way, the, you know, the, the, the economy as this kind of abstract thing as though people don't make up the economy somehow. Um, yeah, we can move from that to something which is actually where we actually make the economy work for us as opposed to us working for the economy. So. Any other thoughts or comments? I mean, I just want to say, in some ways we already have this in a way which I was surprised to find when I started my publishing company, mm. that I was surprised to find when I did it that I've got a high turnover, I was earning a lot for the company, I was paying out a lot. 
I haven't made a penny from it in six years, mm. and I was amazed to find that I am financed for that by working tax credit. Mm. So we are already doing this. You know, I'm paying authors, they are paying tax Even if I wasn't, I right. would still be allowed to do it. So that's going to change, so though, that's a thing. They yeah. are, yes. Yeah, um, so now I do have to prove that, um, well, it may be that I can because I'm paying a lot of other people. Okay, well, <laughs> hopefully, yes. Yeah. So it's possible that I'll be okay. It also yeah. showed how much more I was getting for my children. You know, me, mm. I get 50,000 each for me, and it's 100,000 each for them, right. something right. like that. So we already have yeah. all of these things. So the, the basic income, in a way, is replacing what we're already managing to make work, and it's cheaper bureaucratically. So yeah. I can see why the Conservatives would like it in the same way they like to work with that side of it. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's replacing things rather than it always sounds like we're throwing a lot of new money at something, but mm. actually it's just a new way of organizing what we all Yeah, I mean most of the most of the current plans are basically they're taking away the tax allowance. Mm. This tax allowance yeah, is so you take away the tax allowance and then you go Benefit. Yeah. So it's not new money. So rather than uh, you're not actually taking away the tax, you're basically using the tax laws to, to finance quite yeah. finance basically for everybody. So. No, I just wanted to say it sounds like a tax system that we take Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, yes, absolutely. Yeah. I, like, because yeah. Um, it's such a regressive tax system, and people mm. in lower to middle incomes actually do pay the most tax. Mm -hmm. um, in this country, and it's, it's oh, for sure. um, incredibly regressive. Absolutely. Um, and it never, I don't think it used to be. It used to be uh, progressive. The higher you paid, the more tax you earned, the more tax, the more tax yeah. you paid. But somehow that has switched, and I, I don't know if it was in the 60s or 70s, but that's changed well, the quite, age, yeah, it, or the 80s. Since yeah, Thatcher. Thatcher. Since, uh, Thatcher. Since Thatcher. Thatcher. Yeah. No, because that's the thing. I mean, it used to be that, that sort of corporation tax and taxes on things like, by, by, like yeah, inheritance yeah. and dividends and basically unearned income. So if you think of, you know, actually what we've done is is we kind of switch tax from from people work, you know, from people not working to people working. Yeah. So you know, sort of, you know, all the things that people can just kind of earn just because they exist, they happen to own stuff, is not yeah. taxed as much as people working. Yeah, exactly. Which you know, which I don't understand. I mean, any political party, why they're not making why? this? Yeah. You know, that actually, you know, they, they say they support working people, but actually, they, they not. they're punishing they're not working the people all the time, them. and people feel yeah. that. I mean, it's not like you know, people. That's one reason why people have got so resentful. You know. Yeah. And and the way the reason I think the cuts have been successful mm -hmm. in the sense that they've been politically successful yeah. is that there is this kind of big divide that's been set up. You know, you've got people working who may or may not use the services so much, and then you've got people that aren't, you know, that, that don't have access to a wage, who aren't paying those taxes, which then become a kind of, you know, it's been this, this kind it's of a, thing that's been set up against, not, you know, again, people against each other. Yeah. Where it doesn't yeah. need to be another friction. Yeah. Okay, uh, sure. And it's very typical of the way this government politicizes itself. Um, um, yeah. 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 Well, listen, I think that there have been more questions asked today than complete answers given. So perhaps we can wrap sure. up by you telling yeah. us where we can go or what we can do if, if we want to get better know what, about the subject, and then we wrap up because Nader wants to go. Home. Oh yes. Hi. Oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah. All right. Absolutely. Okay. Well, uh, here's a leaflet. You can come to our website, which is be redone, so there might be a little bit of juggling there. We're on social media with um, Facebook, and so we've got a page, we've got a group. Please, you know, add to that if you can. We now have a meetup group, so it's based, it's meetup.com, Basic Income UK, if you want to be part of our discussions. Uh, we've got one coming up on the 11th of May, where uh, and we basically we've been using these to have like you were doing before, okay, with uh, you know having a discussion and then having a kind of more organizing thing at the very end of it. So that's how we've been starting to organize because we found that just meeting to organize really wasn't going anywhere. Mm, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. Well, the um, moment I came to with Brian Eno and Francis Coppola and David Graeber was spectacular. So. Yeah. Yes. Well, they're not all that spectacular. Yeah, now we're meeting in a pub, and, uh, <laughs> yes. so it's, it's not quite as spectacular. But. 
Yeah, you know, rights, I mean, one thing that there's, there's also, I mean, Carolyn Lucas has, has put up a, a quite a wonderful um, early day motion. Yeah. I don't know whether this has been publicized in the Green Party or not, but um, it's really worth people uh, having to go at their MPs about this. It's, it's still open, yeah. they can sign it until May, and then it will fall, but if you, you know, until May, I think. That's, that's I was, So that's pretty good. Yeah, until the end of May. I don't know. I mean, I, I thought it ended at Easter, so I mean, I kind of gave up. <laughs> but 32 MPs have signed it. Um, it's quite interesting. The, the majority have been uh, SNP. Um, there have been about five Labour Party people, um, a couple of S SDLP from, the, from Northern Ireland. So that's kind of interesting. Um, there's going to be... Um, there's going to be a meeting in the House of Common, Commons with Carolyn Lucas and um, Yasmin Qureshi, who uh, was one of the Labour MPs that supported the, the early day motion. So please, you know, you know, do have a chat with your MPs. One thing that we've been also doing in, in basically in Kung UK is, is um, talking about and actually doing, certainly in, Mancha, uh, sorry, in Birmingham this has been happening, where we're talking to people and sort of getting, talking about, you know, asking them about their other civil society connections and what those are and how, you know, how we can kind of lever those into, like if you go to see your MP, don't go alone, go with somebody else who maybe is into something different from you and say, like, we're both, you know, or three or four, or, you know, we're all into this and what do you think, you know, so that, you know, we want to sort of raise the profile of basically income amongst politicians so that, so that we get there. Thank you. So thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank and you. of course we have an election coming up and there's a lot of work to do on that. Anyone want to say something about the campaigning for the election before we close? Yes, we do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for uh, being with us. If anybody wants more information about the Green Party and activities, please add your name to the list before you go. Okay, well, this has actually been very useful and uh, we'll keep you updated. Hopefully, we can actually do this. Okay, thank you, Anarchy, and thank you for watching and everybody else. Okay, this is Obi from uh, yeah, Occupying This Network. Follow us on uh, Twitter and uh, Facebook and uh, yeah, YouTube as well, Occupying This Network. Okay, oh yeah, Global Debut, definitely. Okay, peace out, guys. See you later.